folks, and welcome back to the coverage of the 2022 Open at Belton presented by Discraft. We are now on the back nine of moving day of our first Silver Series stop of the year for the Disc Golf Pro Tour here in Heritage Park out in Texas. Big shout out to all of you for tuning in and a special thanks to our Patreon supporters who helped make all of this possible. I am Dustin Murray. Still bringing you all the action solo here on our Saturday, where the weather conditions were a bit more favorable for our players after a very windy front day. And as you can see on the front nine, Calvin Heimberg had a big one, five under through the first nine, up to 12 under on the day overall for the tournament. And he finds himself in second position just behind Dickerson with Emerson Keith and Chris Clemens also having a pretty good day so far, tied up there in fourth place as we are now on hole 10, a 726 foot par four, wide open up until you need to start approaching this green, which is very well guarded, requiring a very accurate low line to nestle up next to the basket for your birdie. And again, with less windy conditions, it was a bit easier to stay inbounds, though there is OB left and right of this fairway, but a very open shot and Calvin Heimberg strikes one down there. Great skip forward as well. And I'll ask you a question early for the comments. In a situation like this where it's wide open with no win, what is your go-to distance bomber? Let us know in the comments below. As we'll see Emerson Key step up. Going for the big turnover line down the left-hand side, and that is money. He absolutely ripped that thing. Look how close he is to the green. It's going to be a little chip shot approach. Let's see Dustin Keegan up next. Playing the right hand side of the fairway. See that still skips well past the 400 foot marker. So covers some good ground. Slight turnover there on the backhand from Chris Clemens, but that is not going to find the fairway. Skips just out of bounds. Covers a lot of ground just before the 400 marker, before it went OB, but still going to have a tough approach here just to save the par. A really nice skipping forehand, though. Puts him right next to the pin, and so he'll at least be able to get the par save. As we see Dustin Keegan up next, who... Again, made it well up there. Plays out that wide hyzer backhand skip shot. And, oh, catches that tree right there on the edge of circle one. Maybe obstructed now. So you see Calvin again who boomed it down there. Feeds it right through the middle. Wasn't quite the line he was looking for, and that tree might provide a little bit of an obstacle, but still makes it into circle one. Emerson, who threw it well over 500, looking for the low forehand. And skips it up there nicely. Really well done from Emerson Keith. And yeah, Dustin Keegan, as kind of expected, is kind of challenging one here. Ah, catches the chains, but not on the right angle will fall out and have to settle for par. Nice long bid there, just on the circle's edge from Calvin Heinberg. He will still find the birdie despite his approach shot not being exactly what he had hoped for. So we see Emerson Keith coming up here after brilliant throws down the fairway, finds his birdie pretty easily. Everybody else just looking to tap out. Should be pars for our two remaining players here after Keegan got caught up on the approach and Clemens went OB. So we now head into hole 11, 293 foot double island fairway. Gotta be short of the road or past the road. That OB comes in tight on the back side. Definitely provides some challenges for our players, though. Again, a little bit more favorable conditions today, so a little bit easier to fight the winds. See Calvin Heiberg up first. 
Skates it up there nicely. Should be right there on the edge of the circle. Emerson puts this up there as well. It's a nice soft landing and pretty much parked there right near the bullseye. Nice straight shot here from Dustin Keegan. Going to skip forward there to the edge of the circle as well. And so, so far, so good for the car. We'll see if Clemens can keep this one clean. And he's yanked that one well right, but if it gets some good ground action, could be good. And yeah, he knows his disability. He gets it right there next to the pin. Calvin Eiberg's pizza misses the oven. But uh, you will at least find the easy par tap in. Keegan looked wide right there, so another par will have to be settled for for Dustin. Emerson, though, will have no trouble finding the birdie. That'll gain him a stroke on Calvin Heimberg. This is played fairly easy on the day. 13th in difficulty, 0.36 under par, 50% of the field finding the birdie. So we'll see the par there from Dustin Keegan. And a tap in birdie there for Chris Clemens and the par for Heimberg. As we move into hole 12, a very tricky hole as this gap is about 300 feet down the fairway and then you have a long uphill climb towards the basket, another 70 feet or so. Very tricky green. You can see a lot of different plays on this hole, but again, you still have to hit a gap that's well down the fairway. Flex forehand here from Emerson, and this looks pristine. That is an absolute dart being tossed there. He will make it inside the circle. It's like a backhand option here for Chris Clemens. Trying to get the turnover, but does not quite get the turn he needed. Bounces around, though. Still might have a look towards the pin for par. See Calvin Heinberg on the tee now. Looking to attack it with a slight turning shot as well. Doesn't quite get as much turn as he wanted. Still filters up the hill, though, and might have a chance to approach the pin for par, but birdie seems like it'll be tough. It's Dustin Keegan now up. Also looking for the backhand slight turning shot. Begins to fade out and stays in the gap, but still a good 70 to 80 feet short of the pin as they did move this pin deeper this year so definitely a more challenging green to approach than years past no oh and Clements catches a tree on the way up to the pin look good out of his hand but catches a rough bounce yep. Dustin Keegan though nice little approach shot there to get to the pin for par and definitely see some trees here contending for Calvin so just lay up there with a bit of a stepper. Escape with this par, no problem. For Clemens, par is going to be a much tougher challenge. Trying to go for a bit of a patent pending here. Is it kind of a soft bid with the toss, but we'll fall into the bullseye. That's going to be a bogey for Clemens. Emerson. Such a great shot off the tee with that forehand. We'll capitalize for birdie. That'll tie him up with Calvin Heinberg at 13 under. See everyone else kind of just tapping out here on hole 12. Again, pretty tough hole. This play is the fourth most difficult on the day. Point one five over par. Only 10% of the field getting the birdie. Saw one of them here from Emerson Keith.
And now we head into the treacherous hole 13, 399 feet. A very difficult par three. It is so wooded all the way down the fairway. Really tough to get to the putting green off the tee. On the right hand side, it's been cleared out this year to make scrambling a bit easier. And it's still just so tough to attack this hole. Forehand up the gut here from Emerson. Going to kick out, though, to that lower right-hand side. Going to test his scrambling abilities to get up there for par. As Calvin calls it, a little bit of an early release there, and he gets a pretty stiff kick to the right-hand side. So, again, scrambling going to be required. Just see Dustin Keegan looking to take the tee here and see if he can do one better. Uh, makes some good progress. Just misses that Y gap, though, but does settle center of the fairway. See Clemens looking to attack with the forehand. And that's just looking great out the hands. Wow, what a shot from Clemens. A little bit of an unfavorable roll down the hill, but at least he has a look at the basket for birdie, which was, I can promise you, a rare occurrence throughout today and really throughout the whole tournament. Looked like a good flexing forehand doesn't kick his hand, but catches one of those last little overhanging branches. Flick here from Calvin's a bit better, but still some work to be done to get to the pin. Good scramble shot there from Merson Keith. And this is the point where it's worth telling this was the most difficult hole on the day. 0.89 strokes over par. Only 2% of the field found the birdie. That's two players that found it. As we see Dustin Keegan scrambling up there. Oh, nice bid there from Galvin Heinberg, but does fall out. And here is Chris Clemens for a rare birdie look here on hole 13. And he will connect again, one of only two birdies on the day. It was Clemens and Cole Redlin. So shout out to those two. The putt falls there for par for Emerson Keith. The rest of the car looks to just kind of clean up a little bit and try to escape with as little damage as possible. Again, such a treacherous hole on the back nine. Will be the bogey there for Dustin Keegan. And that's Calvin Heimberg taps in for his own. I mean, it's literally the most popular disc of all time in the history of the sport. At its core, it's one of the most important tools a player has in their bag, a dependable, straight-flying mid-range. But the legacy of the Buzz goes a lot deeper than just that. All right, now let's hop back into some more back nine coverage here. We're on hole 14, a 354-foot par three. Just need to get through that initial gap off the tee and carry right, avoid the windmill. Try to give yourself a putt. So you see Clemens taking the box. Just a pushing hyzer backhand from the lefty. And he will get inside circle one, so gives himself a chance to connect for another birdie. Our popular option for the right hand players here are going to be the forehands. Looks good from Emerson. It needs to filter through this tree and gets a little bit caught up, but I believe he still should have a look for birdie from there. Doesn't look too obstructed. Calvin finding the bulk of the bark there. 
might have a little bit more of a step out required to find his putt. Dustin Keegan getting a great flare into the bullseye. Big chance for birdie there for him. So you see Clemens up first to putt. Coasting it in there, really well done. Back to back birdies. Make up for that bogey on 12. And yeah, Heimberg challenging putt here. Tries to loft it up over the bush and it's just a little high. Definitely a tough look and made the most of it. We'll have to settle for par, however. Looks like Emerson will be able to straddle out and be relatively unobstructed. Definitely going to require him to do his Pilates, though, and get that stretch going. Pays off to be flexible in disc golf, that's for sure, in moments like this. Looks like Emerson's got it. Emerson's patience will be rewarded. Takes his time and finds the birdie. Having a good run here. Three for four through our last few holes. And Dustin Keegan absolutely parked off the tee. We'll find his birdie as well as Calvin will tap in the par. And we'll look to move on to our final stretch here of moving day. As we get into one of our easier par fours on the day, it is hole 15, 620 feet. Just need to make sure you stay more towards that right-hand side of the fairway. The more left you are, the more pinched off you are on the approach. Just need to get it uphill, but just cover as much ground as you can off the tee. Try to make that approach as easy as you can. Flexing forehand out of Clemens. Looks like a little nose up though, gets caught up and stalled out left and again that really kind of sets up a much trickier approach to the gap. Still possible though, just might require a bit of a skip shot. Emerson going for the backhand turnover, hugging it out to the left, but he's just not getting the turn he needs at stalling out. And looks like in even trickier conditions than Clements. It's going to be very tight to try to get up to the green from there. Maybe a little bit of overturn here from Dustin Keegan. Didn't quite have the height to get it to fight out, but still manages to coast up there a good ways. And again, playing to that right-hand side gives him a bit more of a look to approach. So, so far, some tricky approaches ahead for our car. We'll see what Calvin Heimberg has in store. Definitely a guy that can light up the fairways with some big distance. And that is looking mint. Keeping it dead center most of the way through. Get some skips to the left and makes it a bit tricky, but he's already made so much progress that the approach should be very manageable. This is what Keegan's left with, a bit of a low ceiling in front of him. Able to keep the disc down though, and that'll skip up there nicely. That should be a great birdie look there for Dustin Keegan. And yeah, here we are with our players on the left-hand side. As you can see, certainly tough. Anheuser forehand a tip there from Emerson, and it actually punches through, it looks like, a pretty good ways. Not sure what look he had from there, but... Meanwhile, Clemens getting caught up on the skip up the hill. Going to leave him a lengthier uphill putt. Forehand roller here from Heimberg. will nestle him right next to the pin for birdie. And yeah, look at this. Emerson actually did much better than I would have thought, considering his positioning. Ah, just a little low. Good attempt. 
Here we see Clemens going for his. And puts it in. Little chains required. And, I mean, Chris Clemens has hit several big putts throughout this round. I think we had two rewinds for him on the front nine. So, definitely finding some good putts. Keegan will find his birdie as well. Looks like Emerson should just be tapping in a par. And Heinberg just dropping in the birdie. And now we move into hole 16. A tight little par three at 235 feet with a little bit of a mound that guards the front side of the green. Requires you to have great height to get over that and make sure you nestle up next to the basket. A little bit deep there from Chris Clemens on that forehand. Gets a little bit more ground action than he was probably hoping for. Dustin Keegan, though, to perfection with the slight turnover right there under the basket. Really well executed. The rest looking to do something similar, you'd imagine. As that'll do just fine for Calvin. And just a bit short. Is this the play as the easiest hole on the day with 54% of the field finding the birdie? Emerson just short of being one of those players. Actually had two aces on the day, if you can believe it. Chandler Kramer and Cody Kilgore. So shout out to those two players for pinning the ace. As Clemens will find another big putt right there on the edge of the circle. Calvin having no trouble finding his birdie as well. Same for Dustin Keegan here. Emerson having to settle for the par, but still very much in contention at 1400, right next to Clemens and Heimberg. As we move into hole 17, a par four at 577 feet, a tight gap off the tee that you must get through. And really the name of the game on this hole is the approach. Such a tricky uphill, guarded green, lots of roll away risk. Definitely must be careful as you approach this basket. And honestly, even the tee shot, tougher than you might think. It's a lot tighter in person. But Clemens will navigate it just fine with the backhand. Nestle up there nicely, give him a clean look for the approach. Forehand, certainly the more popular option for our right-handed players. Dustin Keegan walks off knowing that he's done what he's needed to do. Gets through and gets out into the open. And Calvin, I don't know if he's attacking this for eagle with the backhand, but we'll see. Plays a big turnover. And yeah, that gets way up the fairway. Definitely got real aggressive there with that backhand, and that'll make the approach much shorter. Low forehand here for Emerson Keith. It's some good ground action, though. And everyone getting out into the open to set up the approach, but again, this is where the real challenge comes on this hole. That will play. Well done. Clemens now up, looking to try to keep the hot streak going. He's had a few birdies in a row here, looking to add another. And he'll find himself just at the base of the stairwell up. So a little bit of an uphill putt, but well within the circle. Low skipper forehand here for Emerson Keith, and it makes some good progress up and does lay on down for him on that second step. And yeah, basically just a putt approach here for Calvin. 
And... Actually stays saved by a bush, I believe. Something caught his disc there, so he's right next to the basket. And Clemens continues his putting prowess today. But the uphill connection. Puts in the 15 under. Little right there from Emerson, but it does hang on. So he'll find his birdie as well. We might have a perfect little run here on hole 17 from our card. Indeed, Dustin does find it. And I, again, I think Calvin's right here. I don't think he had the roll away. I think he got stuffed up. So he walks up. And yeah, I did just hold on. So there you have it. Birdies all around here on 17 from our chase card. As we head into our final hole of the day, a 465 foot par three here for 18. Very tough to attack this green, requires a lot of distance, either a big hyzer outright for our right-handed players or the forehand or the lefty backhand up the middle. As we see Clemens take it. Just didn't put that outside enough, and we'll get caught up on that tree line, but shouldn't have too many complications approaching for par. See Dustin Keegan up next. Looking to play the turnover backhand. Starts to fight out just towards the end and makes some great forward progress. Looks like he's just in circle two. And Calvin certainly has the power to get there in his own right. Puts it way out wide, but knows the turn of this disc. Does fizzle out a little bit later than he thought, and does just stay in bounds, it looks like. Wow. As this was still playing very difficult despite the low end. Third difficulty on the day. We see Emerson Keith ripping the forehand out to the left. Some good ground action forward, and does get just outside circle two. Again, very tough to access this green for the birdie put Only 3% of the field finding the birdie. That's a good approach there from Chris Clemens. Should set him up for the par. Maybe a chance for a bit of a bid here from Emerson. Does put it up there. Falls just short, but a stress-free par is certainly a great way to end the round on the tough hole like this. Calvin just a bit low, almost found the birdie. Keegan has a chance to do it. The stepper, but wide left. And yeah, only four birdies on the day. It was Chris Dickerson, Corey Ellis, Alex Russell, and Patrick Blazik who found scores on 18 on the day. Shout out to those rare birdies. So we watch our chase card tap out their pars to end their round. And there you have it. That is how things shook down for our chase card for round two with Calvin and Emerson, as well as Chris Clemens, all find themselves 15 under par at the end of the day. Chris Clemens coming in hot on the back nine with five birdies in a row. Dustin Keegan down there with nine under. And this is how it looks big picture going into the final day with Calvin Heinberg, Emerson Keith actually jumping into the lead card, tied for second place with Ricky Wasaki as Dickerson still leads. And that's going to do it here for us for our coverage for moving day of the Open at Belton at Heritage Park. Of course, be sure to follow and subscribe to the channel to catch final round coverage here for the Chase card. And again, a big shout out to all of you viewers and Patreon supporters who helped make this all possible. Again, I am Dustin Murray. I've had a pleasure bringing you the coverage, and I'll be back for the finals coming up soon. If you want to follow me, you can. It's at follow Dustin Instagram and Twitter, as well as Dustin Disc on YouTube. And once again, thanks for much tuning in, and we'll catch you again real soon.